Ooh, I, I've come again today for I've been studying the the word and um, and I've been studying what it really means about Pharaoh um, in my other film I read about Egypt, but I was impressed by the Spirit to find out why this leader, can't think of his name, why this specific leader at this time, this hour, and this date would claim himself as Pharaoh. So I felt led to look up. What does Pharaoh mean? I, we've heard different, I, I thought different things, you know, because at one time some of the Pharaohs claimed they were God. They were the son of Ra. So they were the son of God and therefore they were gods, the ultimate ruler. So I went and, and started looking what Pharaoh means. And, and everywhere I looked, it kept repeating over and over. Pharaoh was the title given to ancient Egypt kings. It comes from the Egypt word Pero, P E R O, which means great house. So, in studying this and searching, why would it, why would it be so important at this time that he would declare himself Pharaoh? And why are the people really kind of angry about him doing so? Well, he's supposed to be. Um, It's supposed to be a democracy, okay? Like, he's elected to be president. Just like, you know, we have elections and and we just had one and Obama was re-elected. Re <clears throat> but whenever he said that he was Pharaoh, he was setting Egypt up as a kingdom. And he's the king king. The leader of all of Egypt, lower, upper Egypt, you know, the ultimate ruler. And never, I mean, it, the, the throne is his. He won't be elected in and he won't be elected out. Kings are not elected. You can see that over in England. The Queen Elizabeth has been a queen for many years and... The king won't come unless, uh, I mean, the ruler of England won't come and become king unless she retires or unless she dies. Well, this is what basically he's doing, and they're upset because he's saying, they're saying that he's declaring himself as a dictator. Well, he's declaring himself as king of Egypt, Pharaoh of Egypt. He's changing laws, and, and it's at, at Pharaoh's discretion to collect taxes, put in laws, change laws, do all of the stuff that kings can do. And that he rules at his discretion, and the people... <clears throat> are granted privileges through his discretion. So, now we can see why he is declaring himself Pharaoh. He has just now set up his ruling as a king. He's kicked out the, the other bodies so 
He is in control, ultimate control. And we know what happens, really we do, when someone has this great power, absolute power is destructive. And when this happened, I'm not for sure how the outcome because the people are angry over there, there and worse at seeing what happened once before that overthrow the other ruler is kind of happening again because see the Egyptians understand the word Pharaoh and they understand the meaning when he says I am Pharaoh of this country so we we see this confliction going on and with this and him changing laws and him taking over he's becoming king not president a king of Egypt once again there will be he's bringing back the old dynasty like Ford as that Pharaoh that king also as I uh, as I read it means great house great house kind of goes along with that reading that I just read out of Ezekiel I mean they they come to the point that everything was created for them and by them the river the Nile River is the basis of Egypt's livelihood you know when the rains come and it floods and and their agriculture depends upon the river and with Ethiopia threatening to dam up the Nile that would dry up the Nile completely well not completely completely but as we know it because the dam would be there and and you know down below the stream still flows but not like it did before because we have dams here in Arkansas built on beautiful rivers and Ethiopia can control the floods and things that Egypt will have so a lot of problems is coming especially when he declared himself Pharaoh it means there won't be no more elections over in Egypt it means that he won't give up his kingdom ever until he dies and then it'll be handed down to his children you know like when the Queen dies it's handed either to her son or her son's son there is great meaning in the spirit the father said the old dynasty is coming back with the authority that it had before with a Pharaoh sitting there ruling this great land you know we all, all remember the story of Egypt and uh, when the children of Israel went to Egypt because of hunger and Joseph was put in charge of the land by Pharaoh there was only one greater than Moses was the Pharaoh he was a king he was a leader he he th that was his country Egypt belonged to the Pharaoh 
not to Pharaoh belonging to Egypt, but Egypt belonged to the Pharaoh. Right now, <clears throat> with a presidency, see, with Democrat parties, it's like the United States, our government is supposed to be by the people, for the people. Well, sometimes I think that we're loosening and getting out of hand on that. But anyway, that's what a president is. The president of Egypt is by the people. The government is ruled by the people. But when you declare yourself Pharaoh, a king, a great house, then you take over and the land, the people become yours. You're, you're no longer subject to them, but they're subject to you. This is why the people in Egypt right now is very upset. Because when we went over there and took this new leader, young leader, really, I mean, I don't know how old he is, but young in, in the role of leadership. It kind of went to his head, and he declares himself Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he's changing laws that nobody can come up against him. Nobody can you know, change the laws back or anything. He got rid of, of the, I want to call it parliament, that's not what they call it, but the other leaders, he got rid of them. He's downsizing his government to one power. And of course, he is backed by the Muslim Brotherhood. And by him becoming Pharaoh, king of Egypt, he has the Muslim Brotherhood standing behind him going, Yes! We are going to see much go on over there. And I, I know some people have said that... Um, that we're not in the days of great tribulations. I I'm sorry. Every try, everybody tries to compact the great tribulations into the last seven years. The tribulations are going on before the last seven years. What it means, the last seven years is the last seven years of the great tribulations, and they specifically in Revelations give what happens. There are things that's coming up that is tribulations, but you can see that the first of the last seven years you have the two witnesses and in that half they are killed and then the Antichrist and the beast and all that rises up, which is the last part of the three and a half years. Don't let people fool you. Looky what's went on. Look, uh, we had World War One, World War Two, and now on the verge of World War Three over in the Middle East. Um, we've had we've had earthquakes. We've had disaster, and every, each year they just seem to grow intensity. And see, that's how it works in anything. It's like a birthing. And as the pains are getting worse and the birth canal begins to open and the pain is intense, that hour of tribulation is there. It is upon us right now, people. Only it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. The intensity is going to grow. 
until the last day of the last of the seven last of period of years. You know, it's like a timetable. You have a timetable here. I pretty well think it began when Jesus left the earth. And it slowly began to multiply up and up heading for those last seven years. And as it's going up, the intensity of things happening is growing worse and worse. I mean, we've seen plagues over, I mean, I haven't, of course. I wasn't alive back in those days, but in England, they had the Black Plague that ravaged not only England, but the other countries around it, you know, France, Germany, and all of in there. That Black Plague traveled and took enormous amount of lies. Um, so one of the horses was right running then. One of the seals was open. The seals has been open throughout this time and now with the seals being open of all the horsemen and I believe that we've seen the last seal of the, the horses open up in Egypt or if it wasn't if it was opened up before we seen his appearance in the streets of Egypt on that on a video people many people don't believe it, but that, never mind. It, it's still part of it. The intensity is growing. And those last seven years will be very intense. But we're headed there now. We're on that slope, you know, that graphic line of years, you know. Um, like, okay, I, I was born in 1944. Okay, 1948, Israel becomes a state because World War II had, had happened and it becomes a state. Then we see another war over in Korea with, that includes America. And we see also the wars in between in Israel where Egypt come over to fight them. Um, all, you know, they call it the Six-Day War. They, there was wars that come, so that line, building on up to what it will be. Now, all I can tell you is I truly believe we'll know when we begin the last seven, when the two witnesses come out of the, the desert into, is, into Judah. I mean, it, into Jerusalem and stand prophesying and witnessing. That will be the beginning of the last, the last seven years. But there's a lot goes on before then. And with this man, this leader of Egypt, declaring that he is Pharaoh, that he is king, that he's great house, that he is the ruler of a great house is only another step up the chain to that last seven years. That's why I keep telling people to prepare your hearts, to prepare yourself. Prepare to meet the Lord, to meet Him. Prepare your hearts. If you think this thing out on the East Coast was just a, a you know, freak of nature, no, it wasn't. It was a judgment on America. And there has been judgments on America all along. New Orleans and different things. And, and, they're, and they're going to grow worse. I'm sorry, people. I know people may say, oh, she's just a doomsday therapist. No, I mean, no, no, no. You see, tribulations upon us, and they're going to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow until 
that lasts seven years. And, and then it's going to be so intense in those last seven years. But believe me, we, the bride, has to be purified. God is not going to let his son marry a dirty bride. He's not going to let his son marry a bride full of pride, hate, bitterness, lust of the flesh, desires of the world. You know, you have to come to the point that you totally, 100%, surrender yourself to him. Surrender yourself to him, to the Ruh Kadesh, the Holy Spirit. Turning it over all to him and let Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, come and dwell within us. And when he comes and dwells in us, the Father comes because he is in the Father and the Father is in him. And when we become one with him, we become one with the Father. We are his tabernacle right now. We are. So it's time to clean house. Father, in the name of Yeshua, let your, let your children's eyes be open to what season and time they're in. Let their eyes be open and let their hearts be prepared for your glorious coming. I don't know when you're coming, but I know it's coming soon. For I can see all your signs. I can see them in the air. I can see them in space. I can see them happening on earth. I see your signs and I know that you're coming. And that your appointed times are being brought forth within us and motivated. Your children are being called out to stand forth, to become that that branch that's connected to that vine that's connected to the root that grows in holiness and righteousness. Lead us to you in your perfection in these days of trouble. Help us stand. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen and Amen.